Hello and welcome to Reality Check. This channel cares for hearts and minds. Every week we have conversations regarding mental health in the areas of family, marriage, your relationships, your parenting journey, and your overall well-being as an individual. And um, my name is Rachel Mwine. I'm joined by two very special people, not new to you. We had uh, Pastor Kagwisa here with us a couple of weeks back discussing divorce. Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched that episode, I encourage you to do that, maybe before you watch this one. Um, and uh, Dr. Ivas, who is also not new to you, she is a trained therapist, um, supports the areas of marriage as well. Uh, parenting, she's a relationship coach, and also supports workplaces, so corporate organizations that would like to extend um, mental health care to their employees. She's the person to, to work with. Um, today we're going to be discussing something rather sensitive, and um, Dr. Evers and I have been wondering, how do we go about this conversation? <laughs> but here we are. Um, in the episode where we discussed divorce, we talked about infidelity and the sensitivity of it and today we want to speak about what is commonly termed as homewreckers you know people who end up having uh, affairs with one of the partners in a committed relationship um, either a marriage or a committed relationship and um, and so if you are described as a homewrecker chances are you have been involved with either the husband or the wife in a committed relationship and in a marriage. And so welcome, Pastor, welcome back. Thank you, Rachel. And, and thank you for being here. Welcome, Dr. Avers. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I want us to start at the beginning, and uh, the question I'm going to ask you is interesting because when people hear the word homewrecker, they think about the person who has an affair with the husband or the wife. But when I was reading up on this conversation, because I needed to be ready, <laughs> Most people think the homewrecker is the person who made the vow. And so I want to hear what you have to say about that. Who exactly is the homewrecker? Um, is it the one who made the vows to his partner or the person who is coming from the outside? <laughs> I'm stirring the waters a bit, but I, I'm curious to hear what you have to say about that. And, and we'll start with our guest. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for having me back. Good to be back here with you on the show. Who is the homewrecker? I would say both. Both. Mm -hmm. I would say both because uh, number one, you touched something about the one who made the vows. Mm -hmm. If we begin there, first of all, the one who made the vows knows that they made vows. Yes. And that means they know exactly what they are doing and the implications of what they are doing. They've decided, I have a home here, I have a covenant here, I have a relationship here, but I'm going to go for extra. Mm. And I know that out there, we, a lot of people's primary attack is on the, the third party. But I always say, for instance, you know what ladies do when, when most of the times a lady, a woman of the house gets to know that um, her husband... Mm is doing something extra with a girl at office somewhere and they attack the girl mm. and I keep telling them it's pointless a lot of times it's pointless mm. now I'll, I'll mention a moment where it can help but a lot of times because I say and, and this is what we say you're stealing my husband mm. and I tell the ladies something I said to, to, to the gentlemen if your husband your spouse is like something a commodity that can be stolen, stolen. then they they lost their worth mm. and maybe you married something wrong because it's you steal a phone because the phone can't speak or fight for itself so I can't be stolen mm. I have to be willingly stolen <laughs> yes. you can't steal me from my wife mm. you, you can steal my wife from me so it's actually it's actually very disrespectful we don't realize it you stole my husband so you fight it's like you're fighting for a baby mm. a grown man who made vows with you or a grown woman who made vows with you and you're fighting the other person they stole you mm. 
So I'm saying it put, puts this person at a place where, oh, you're like, you couldn't help yourself. So I begin there and I say, the person who made vows, mm -hmm. you know, you know what you're doing. You know where you're at. You know why you're doing what you're doing. So I, first of all, put it there. Mm -hmm. But then on the, the other side, of course, the reason I said both, Rachel, mm -hmm. is many times, and I'm saying many times, not all times, the the other person gets to know that the person I'm dealing with is actually married or committed somewhere. But there are also instances when they don't know. That's true. There are a lot of instances because they are, they are professional cheaters <laughs> who just know when to put off the ring sure, yes. and act single and the, the, the poor person on the other side has no clue. Sometimes people actually do ask, are you married, are you mm -hmm. with anyone? No, I'm not. They're lying. So unless you become a, a researcher, an inspector, <laughs> to look for dig up, eh, which most people don't do. But for those who know this person is married and yet they, and they, they, they are coming after me or they're interested in me, and you give, then you become a homewrecker if you allow yourself to go into that, knowing exactly. So I would say both. In the instances where both know. Yeah. Now, where the other person doesn't know, That's a, I would say the one who made the, the, one who made the vows is yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that answer <laughs> um, because I feel like today we have people doing it no, more knowingly yeah. and they'll play the victim card, you know, like we're having issues in our marriage and maybe I'm even thinking about walking away. I'm suffering, you know, take care of me <laughs> kind of approach. So I think in a bid for it to become normal and it being normalized, people are not hiding anymore. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's a shame. Dr. Evers, what, what do you have to say? I have to say what Pastor what Kogisa Pastor? said. <laughs> but uh, um, Rachel, maybe I should... Uh, I should start from where you started, um, that this is a very sensitive issue and uh, speaking as a, a, a therapist, the purpose we're doing this is to heal, not to throw stones. So I just thought I would mention that at the start. And um, when you think about it, I, uh, before we went on air I was saying, man, this, this is treading where the angels feared. <clears throat> But uh, we have to talk about it. Um, on a daily, we see people hurting from this practice, um, this um, behavior, and, and we can't keep quiet. We're seeing deprived children because of, uh, last time we were talking about broken marriages and the impact it's having on individuals but on children. And, and so we are seeing hurting children deprived of parental care because one of the, of the parents is stolen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was sharing with Pastor uh, about this baby who, whose dad comes back in the morning um, almost every day and, the, and this uh, four-year-old looks at him and says, I'm oh, sorry daddy, you didn't sleep here, I checked for you, um, I checked in your bed and you weren't there, sorry you forgot to come home. <laughs> Little oh, brain. You understand, brain. and so and, um, and and of course, children are hurting. Um, they are hurting. Of course, uh, we've mentioned here that for every broken marriage, um, if not by the grace of God, are broken generations. That's true. And so we can't take marriage casually. And I've I've I've, I've emphasized this issue on the show, casualness in marriage and, and part of it of course is reflected in a stolen partner um, and then of course also Rachel um, every day we are seeing um, um, I'm seeing people broken who thought they had gotten a good deal and and uh, and it always ends in tears and so um, they are hurting we are seeing broken families, broken, disintegrating because of this, this practice. And so we can't keep quiet. So I just thought I would, I would start there and assure people that we will, uh, we'll, we will observe the sensitivity of it. But as much as possible, this is a conversation to have. Having said that, um, 
what Pastor Kagwisa has mentioned, I also agree it's both. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when he talked about being stolen, mm -hmm. um, in, in uh, let me just share an experience from my life. Um, I was two years married and um, my husband had gone out to study. <clears throat> then my brother, one of my brothers was, was doing his course at the University of Makere. So I went to pick something from him. And when I got there, um, the, the colleague he was studying with, some, some high-end government official, um, so he saw me. And then he said, oh, my brother is a reverend. He said, oh, reverend, why don't you give me your sister? And then my brother said, oh, this is somebody's, this is a Nalongo, right? Um, my twi our twins were about, were about um, one year, yeah. one year. And then, and then, and then he ridiculously, mm -hmm. ridiculously said, I don't care. Um, he said, yes, he said, I don't care. And, and he was all eyes open. Oh, I don't care. I will steal her from the husband. I was so offended. I said, sorry, what? Sorry, what? You see, so um, what you were saying, I, I could see the clumsiness in this so-called government official and an old man and just he's seen you it's just a couple of minutes and he has already made a decision to marry you mm. <laughs> you the see audacity. <laughs> the audacity and i was very offended i had to take him on i said still me <laughs> still say that again still me am i a god mm. now so um what he was mentioning now just imagine i said oh yeah <laughs> now so that's where it starts from yeah. and uh, and uh, what you mentioned that people know people know and and, and we, i mean we meet people every day they know and they say oh some of them say i didn't know mm -hmm. but they knew others outrightly know yeah. and so both both um the the outsider who sees a marriage forming, and I'm sure we are getting into this, and, and they, they have no, no consideration mm -hmm. for this, and, and they say, I'll get in, yeah. uh, after all. And others, um, others probably didn't know. They don't do um, due diligence, as he was talking. They meet someone, and the following day they are their partner. But uh, I also wanted to emphasize the issue that he talked about, the insider, the insider who goes to top up their marriage. Mm. <laughs> top up. It's top up. It's the first time I'm hearing that <laughs> one. Yes. <laughs> it's marriage top, top up. up. Yeah, marriage top up. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and so they know. Mm -hmm. they, and they, they want the marriage. And they love the marriage. Mm. But, but they also want what's on the side. But they also... Um, Sometimes they think they can, they can actually play the game and no one gets to know. I mean, sin. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a deception. And so they, they think they can do that and still get away with it. Uh, but also let me clarify, uh, I think Doug, uh, what Pastor was mentioning, it's actually both men and women. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's both men and women. And, uh, and it's very interesting now we have so many women who are becoming a little more courageous. Yeah, yeah so just at this point I'll say that. Yeah. Um, so usually homewreckers are generally considered successful because they are loopholes in a marriage or in a relationship. And I wonder, shouldn't we be focusing more on fixing the loopholes in our marriages than crying foul when it comes to, I'm going to air quote, home wreckers. Um, I think, I feel that maybe we spend a lot of time castigating, you know, the ones who are on the side and we don't spend the equal amount of time focusing on the loopholes in our marriage, but also are loopholes uh, a reason for anyone to go on the side? I'll go first. Yeah. <laughs> you see, don't be fooled. Yeah. 
Now, I'm, I'm, I'm actually hoping that uh, at some point we're going to have uh, a conversation on, on the developmental stages of marriage. Now, there's no marriage without a loophole. If everyone chose to, to, to get a, a, a wrecker outside, they can, yeah. um, because there is no perfect marriage. And, and, and because marriage grows, yeah, if, if you are allowed, now let me just, let me use uh, an illustration of a child. We have children growing. Now when you have your little baby uh, still crawling and, and you see one who is going to kindergarten, you don't go to get, you say, ah, mine is taking long, let me get the one. <laughs> no, marriage grows. And, uh, and if you allow me, Rachel, there are, there are four stages of marriage. Um, we have the, the dream. Yes. The dream stage, that stage where everyone feels they are with the right person and oh my God, how could God be perfect in <laughs> accurate you know. in making this? And that stage is important. We all enjoy that stage. But from that stage, we go to the next stage called drama. Where there's conflict, where you wonder whether this is the person you married, and, and that's absolutely you normal. It's, it's a developmental stage. At the wrong time. <laughs> like, really? How did I end up with you? Now, that happens almost. The degree to which it happens is Marriage different, varies, but we all go through that stage. And I want to assure people, even before we get into that detailed conversation at some point, that that's normal. It's normal for people to conflict and, 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 and have drama and wonder and all that. That's absolutely normal. We, then we get to a stage we call discovery, where you're discovering that this person was human after all and, and all these and the loopholes you're talking about, um, the angel you thought you married, actually you realize they are half angel and, <laughs> and all that. And, and you discover all that. Now. Um, that, that's why I tell people that when we marry, it's no longer a hangout at a coffee shop. And you, it's, the, it's the Monday through Sunday. And in Monday through Sunday, there's lots of detail. And, and uh, so we move from, from uh, excitement stage to management stage. Now that management stage, there are, there are loopholes. There, there are so many things that are going to happen. Now you would be naive to think that because there's a loophole, then, then, the, the, then the person should go out. That's, that's childish, absolutely childish. And then, of course, we get to fourth stage, which is depth and, and acceptance and, you know, excitement and growing together, you go back to that. But if anyone wants to say they are cheating because there's a loophole in marriage, that's silly. You see? It is, it's as simple as, it's silly, because you see, that loophole, you don't cover it, you don't close it by getting another person. That's what we call the 80-20% principle in marriage. There is always, an, there is always a 20% yes. missing, yes. you see? And, and, and so when you go out to look for, for the 20%, you probably are going to lose the 80 you see? So there is always a loophole. We are all growing. And uh, I've also mentioned here that uh, people who have been married two, three, four, five, ten years, um, I'm married 28 years, I'm no longer the little girl that got she married, married. Yeah. you know? Um, so many things have changed. My perspective has changed. I've grown in grace. I've grown in, you know, I'm... I'm you know, if, that's why I tell people that if marriage has the potential to mold us and make us better and improve us. So that's an improvement journey. And so you cannot say, oh, because there's a loophole, someone has come in. Mm -hmm. and, and any, any marriage wrecker who comes in to close the, the, the <laughs> Is also One deceived. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a deception. It's, deception, it's yes. absolute deception. Because why don't you start your own? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and now you come to close. And, and of course. Because I, somebody's telling you you are their panadol painkiller. Mm. That's a, that's yeah. that's yeah. Really, you make it. <laughs> that, that's not true. <laughs> you know, I, I'll tell you what. And, and and of course I've met some who say, you know, he told me or she told me that they were going to women. Women, men yeah. don't say that. Um, he told me that 
him and the wife had problems. problems so. yes, yeah. You have to be naive to believe that. And even if it were true. Mm -hmm. So you're the problem solver? You are God from heaven. <laughs> to solve the problem. Yeah. Solve no, it's, the it's being naive. Yeah. It's being naive. Yeah. Every marriage has one. Yeah. So that, that can be the reason. No, no, no. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> Dr. Evans has said it all. Yeah. Really, because... It's, it, uh, it's selfish, actually, mm. and self-centeredness to, if you use loophole as an excuse, mm. because like she said, if, if, if Winfred, if my wife looks for issues with me, she'll find... She'll find them. They are there. <laughs> if she looks for 10, she'll find 20. 20. I know, that's true. <laughs> if I look for 10, I'll find them also. Mm. So... There's no perfect marriage. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. There's no perfect marriage. We actually don't stay faithful to our partners because they are perfect, are perfect. or because we have a perfect marriage. This is commitment. Mm -hmm. it's, it's commitment. Mm -hmm. It's commitment. And I found that everything where you find God calling you to commit, mm -hmm. he's telling you at one point or another it will get hard. The road ahead. Is it will get hard. You'll hear things and stories that will tell you you shouldn't stick with it. But he says, keep at it. Keep at it. Yeah. It's commitment. That's why he made it covenant. Mm -hmm. And to every, I don't know if you will lead us there or not, but just to be sure that I cover this base. To everybody who ends up being a homewrecker, whether the one who took the vows well, or the one, one that is outside you're breaking covenant. It's as simple as that. Mm. And covenants are very serious before God. Yes, very serious before God. Yeah. And the reason he makes it a covenant is to, to say, to, to bring you to a place where you say, it doesn't matter how hard it gets. I'm going mm. to keep there. I've covenanted. Mm. That's the, Rachel, think about it. Yeah. It's the whole point of covenant. Yeah. God takes it from the casualness to covenant. Mm. Why does he do that? Mm. Why? I even find that people that are not strongly Bible-believing mm. or born again, when they say we want to honor this thing called marriage, mm. they go to walk down the aisle. They yeah. go to church. Yeah. We Absolutely. have so many people that are not born again. Mm. They believe in God somehow yeah. and the Bible, and they go to church. So if, for marriage, so you want to ask them, why did you go to church for your wedding? To make a covenant. Mm. To, in other words, to put it another way, to make it serious, serious. Yes. thank you, yeah. to make it serious, to yeah. say, I'm committing. Yeah. Now, if you go to that place, yeah. why would you even think mm -hmm. that there's an option? Everywhere God sends you to covenant, he's saying it is serious, it's commitment, yeah. even when it, it gets, gets hard. hard. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. So loopholes will always be yeah. there. Always be there. There's no marriage without it. Mm. That would be an excuse to say, in fact, we can as well, every marriage can now have a ticket to everybody go mm. do yeah. whatever, because every marriage has a loophole. Mm. Yeah. It's not sufficient yeah. for, for, for an excuse. Mm. And so building strong marriages, when you begin to build, that building also never stops. Yes. You don't wake up one day and say, we've arrived. We've arrived. Whoosh, it's Ooh. like we finished our house, we roofed it, we've moved in. Nothing yeah. to add. Yeah. No, there will always be something to add. So, the first stages you talked about, Dr. Evers, mm. there will always be work to mm. do. Yeah. There will always be. be. You, you, you're never going to build and say, we have now perfected. Mm. So, as long as you're still building a strong marriage, mm. there will always be an excuse for somebody to say, I'm tired. I want mm. to look at the other. I want to look. It doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work, really. Yeah. It doesn't work. Um, I'm curious about the, you know, the, the third parties who knowingly pursue or agree to walk a journey with a married person. So let's say a man or a woman. What's usually going on in their minds? And I'm glad we have someone who has studied psychology and a man of God. What is usually going on through their minds? Because nobody, and you have said this before on the show, no one wants to play second fiddle. We all value exclusivity at some degree, you know? And so I want to understand what is going on through their minds to say, okay, let me go through with this relationship, even though they know, and probably in their heart of hearts believe, okay, yes, the marriage is having issues. What if he doesn't come to me? What if he never leaves his wife? What gets them so convinced that there's actually a future here, even though this person has already covenanted to someone else? Mm. 
No, so Rachel, the, one of the things you have to consider is that in the foundation of this practice uh. are a number of things. Um, what Pastor has talked about, selfishness, mm -hmm. selfishness, um, there's naivety, but then there is deception. The biggest thing is actually deception. Um, for someone to believe that uh, they can, um, that they are better than the person they oh. married. Um, I've, I've also oh. met that. You know, um, uh, someone was saying, oh, you know, he deserved better. He deserved better. <laughs> and you were better. And you That's better. the highest form of pride. Of pride. Yes. Dear yes. Lord yes. Jesus. But also deception. Mm. For you to think that you're better than the other party, that's a lie. Mm. And, uh, and uh, so you give yourself lots of credits and, and assume mm. that um, you're going to be better than the other person. But then also, what is at the depth of it is poor moral stature. Mm. You know, morality is everything. True. Our standard of right and wrong is very, very important. It guides our lives. And uh, for instance, whenever I'm working with people to develop what we call a personal value system, um, our values are very important and among them, you know, when we talk about a personal value system, we are talking about your standard of right and wrong. And so if someone believes um, that uh, it's right for them to pursue the other person, mm -hmm. then that's what is in their minds. It's acceptable. Yep. It's acceptable. They know the person is married, but they say, well, there's nothing wrong with it. We mm -hmm. can be too. Oh, mm. I, oh the, mm. yeah. Oh, I'll steal. Oh, I'll, I'll steal. eventually win. Yeah, yes. I'll steal and weaken. Yeah. I, I, I actually learned that there is a, an association of home wreckers is in this there? city. Yes, no way. yes, there is. No way. And uh, and they do certain things. Okay. They call people's partners late in the night. Really? Um, the association is for women, not men. I have information. Wow. Um, so they 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 will just call somebody's husband at midnight and then cause commotion mm. and, and do all that. Oh, wow. And and so <laughs> such a person, their moral stature. Yeah. Th their moral stature is, is really, really lacking. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, and, and so they, they believe, mm -hmm, you know, it's okay. It's, okay. it's yeah. acceptable. So yeah. as long as you train your brain to accept that that's, that's okay, that's acceptable behavior, mm -hmm. then you're, you're that's your standard. That's your standard. your standard. But then also others believe in competition. They say, mm -hmm. oh, we'll compete. And whoever who wins, wins. Who wins. Oh, and wow. they do all manner of dramatic things to compete with the official yeah. partner. Um, even men, by the way, um, men who steal people's wives, they also deceive themselves. They are better than the other <laughs> person. Actually, for them, it is I'm better. I, I can put I up can a better put. show. I can. Um, How do these people sleep at night? <laughs> <laughs> you see, kind of thinking. no, so look, um, conscience, mm -hmm. conscience, absolutely, yeah, conscience. the Bible calls it a seared conscience, yeah, seared conscience. conscience. it's, it's yeah. dead, they yeah. still, it's dead, yeah. you mm -hmm. see, a conscience can be nurtured, you, we all have a deposit, but it has to be nurtured. Now, the more mm. you refuse to do wrong, the more your conscience becomes stronger. But the more you, you, you do wrong, knowing, yeah. the more you suffocate conscience. So yeah. that's why we get to a point and people just don't care. Mm. You know, they have a seared, uh, dead a seared conscience. conscience. Mm. And so uh, they still sleep. But it doesn't mean they go. This this practice goes without consequences. Mm. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's. I've Absolutely. seen I've yeah. seen people cry, yeah. and uh, as I said, it always ends in tears. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get there. Yeah, we will. We will. We'll get there, and um, and maybe let's get there. I I, I want us to talk to. So both parties, the ones who are in covenant, and the one the third party what is likely to happen. And I think I would like for both of you to paint a picture because you've both had these stories. Mm -hmm. We know them in part, you know, somebody approaches someone, cries, you know, my partner is treating me badly. I'm looking for peace, you know, outside of home. And then they'll start that journey. But like what, 
what is likely to happen, because we say it ends in tears, what's the process? Mm -hmm. What's the process of deception and how can people safeguard themselves mm -hmm. against this deception? So maybe we'll start with the third party. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who maybe is currently being pursued by someone in a marriage? Um, Hmm. What, how can they safeguard themselves or how can they stand their ground and say, no, I'm not going to walk this path? Maybe speak some, um, I don't know. Sense. Sense. I was, I was avoiding that word, but, but yes. It might, it might. That's what it is. That's what it yes. Is. So, first of all, I like telling people that are entertaining any pursuits from a married person. Mm -hmm. Really, we sometimes we just need to use simple, sweet, old common sense. Mm -hmm. If somebody is pursuing you when they are married, mm -hmm. committed to somebody, mm -hmm. regardless of what they say, if they are saying you're the one to solve their problem, take away the pain, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you just apply simple common sense and wisdom to that, it mm -hmm. should be telling you that one day you're going to end up in the same place. He's gonna mm. or she's gonna end up in the same place with you, yeah, because you are forgetting that there was a time this person was also swearing allegiance to the person, to the person they are now there. walking away from. Yes, yes, and they said all the nice things mm -hmm. and how you're the one for me, and suddenly he or she realizes, wants to tell you, I realized I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, what guarantee do you have? You will also not be a mistake tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I usually tell young ladies, I usually because we have more men running around than, mm -hmm. than women. Mm -hmm. I tell them, you know, there's somebody that is going to turn out to be apparently better than you also tomorrow. Mm. If, mm. if he thinks his wife is growing old, you're going to grow old tomorrow too. Yeah. If you, it, there's always a sweetness. Now when you talked about what stage is the, stage. the stage? The dream, yeah, the the dream, dream stage. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Somebody's in there, whatever later stage of their marriage, they've discovered whatever they've discovered. And now you, fresh you, you're being told, I found this pro problem with her, I found this with him, I found, mm -hmm. and you are, common sense should tell you. Mm -hmm. Even if he marries you or she marries you down the road, some discoveries are going to be made about That's you. True. So, so begin there and wake up, yeah. reason with yourself, counsel yeah. yourself. Yes. However much you want. Not too many weeks ago, a young lady walked to me and she, she said, I'm struggling, I'm working on something. I said, what is that? I'm trying. She said, I'm trying to get away from a married man. <laughs> mm. yeah. She said, when it started, I didn't know. Mm. I said, really? Are you sure? Because I was rough on when mm. I said, are you sure you didn't know? I didn't. I said, okay, so you're working on getting away. How serious? Are you I've been procrastinating. I've been, I said do it like yesterday mm -hmm. because after the discovery it's been months before it's hard it's hard when she finally told me I said get out no. now and the last time I saw her I asked did you did you did you get out she said I did I said congratulations mm -hmm. and don't you dare go back, Look back. Mm -hmm. yeah. it can be hard for those that are already in yeah. but it's doable because, and now I take it to the next level, you are going to get hurt mm -hmm. after the being convinced that you are the solution. First of all, I'm telling you that there was a time when that person was, so what they are doing to the other person, they will do to you. For sure. Again, mm -hmm. you will get hurt. Mm -hmm. So either they are lying to you now, or they believe honestly, sincerely, but being sincerely wrong, that you are the solution. Yes. And then the same discovery they had with the first person they'll have with you, if they divorce, for instance, and take you on for the next five years, they'll discover also that you were also. Mm. So it's a cycle yeah. that goes on. And then, touching what I touched earlier, if you break a marriage or a covenant, mm -hmm and you try to start on the foundation of somebody's heartbreak and misery and tears and bleeding and mm. scattered children and mm. you think you're going to build on that, on that, the foundation is already dead. Yeah. It's 
bad. You, you, you just, in fact, you're not going to build anything. You will be deceived to think you're building. You're building. You, you ain't building. You've not, you're not building anything. Yeah. You're just gonna, it's going to be a race to the bottom. Yeah. You may not see it now. You'll see it later. later. Now, many of the, 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 the third parties, the, 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 a lot of them being desperate drives them where they reach a point, especially the young ladies, when will I ever get married? Finally, I got somebody who is interested in me, mm -hmm. and, and uh, whatever. I'm okay being I'll, I'll second. Handle, yeah. I'm okay being second. Yeah. Maybe I can win and completely conquer one day. And, and then you've taken, you're being desperate. You're right. praying on somebody else's heart mm -hmm. and emotions and family, and that's bad seed. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's very bad seed, and some of them I want to be gentle on them at this point. You talked about deception, even though it's never an excuse if you're deceived. For instance, the serious consequences that follow will follow. Mm -hmm. But uh, some of them can be really, really naive. Mm -hmm. And when you dig into their hearts and tell them the truth of what has happened, this person has deceived you, mm -hmm. and this is where you're headed, they wake up and they I didn't see it that way. So mm -hmm. they are crying. Mm -hmm even as they're struggling to get out because yeah. their heart was already in. In it, yeah. So, to God, to answer your question, Rachel, I would say to all the third parties, safeguarding yourself, don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Don't even think about it. It doesn't matter what you are told. Mm -hmm. You are ten times better than her. I never thought, I never saw this. I never, mm -hmm. Don't, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Even if the other person cries and convinces you, tell them, okay, I'm sorry, you are in a terrible marriage, mm -hmm. you are actually in hell on earth, but you are in covenanted hell, and I'm not your savior. Covenanted yeah. hell. Because it's, if you, if, if let's, Dr. Evers, let's take it that somebody is actually in Suffering. hell on earth. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God does not allow us to walk away. Mm -hmm. So you can feel sorry for them, you third party, mm -hmm. tell them, I'm sorry. I feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, your wife is terrible. Your husband is a monster. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're in covenanted hell. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not your savior right. from that. Yeah. You cannot plant chaos, pain, tears, mm -hmm. uh, disappointments, and then you want to be happy on mm -hmm. the other end. No, the, the, by the way, these principles in life are real. <laughs> yeah. They are real. Mm -hmm. Very. You, you don't even need uh, God to come down. He's already put these systems in place and you're going to reap that. Now, when you mentioned something about the, the materials you use to build your marriage, um, just imagine this house which uh, was built many years ago, 20 years ago, painted and all. You can't break it down and then you want to use the same Materials. The same materials, and by the way, that's what it is. Uh, you want to use these same materials to put up a structure. Um, there's something that is going to happen. Some of those uh, tiles and bricks are broken. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah. they are broken. That's a very interesting perspective. Mm. They, they are already broken. Same material. Same, same material. material. <laughs> You're going to use it to build. <laughs> To build That's your an home. interesting, beautiful. So people mm. have to be, to take this very seriously. Yeah. But then going back to um, <clears throat> to 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 the deception, I've I've, I've also seen Rachel that uh, even people who have stolen a partner expect exclusivity. Mm. Mm. Isn't it ironic? <laughs> that, 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 that's, that still doesn't want to be stolen like from. So, so the, what they forget is that this person who stole them, or whatever it is, it speaks to their character. It speaks to their moral infrastructure. So if this person's moral infrastructure is such a, that they can abandon a marriage of 20 years and go for you, this this is character so don't be naive mm -hmm. if they can if they can leave their their children if they can walk away if someone can walk away from their four children just to be with you just to be with you you're not safe mm -hmm. you see this speaks to somebody's character it's what kind heroic. of character it's, it's not, not heroic, heroic. <laughs> yeah. if they are telling you they have challenges in their marriage then they are not good at problem solving. You don't solve a problem by creating 10 more. Yeah. 
You see? So this speaks to somebody's character. Mm. So the person, you on the other side, please be alert. Mm. Don't be, and I'm speaking, hoping that someone is just naive. Yeah. Um, be, be alert. But, but also, I wanted to add something. Um, maybe I speak to those that are in, 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 the, in the covenant, the wreckers from within. The records from me. The records from it sounds rough, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's self, what self destroying. <laughs> yes. Self destroying. Now, uh, number one is that uh, is uh, I just remembered scripture, Pastor. Um, scripture in Genesis three about the fall of man. Um, I love that scripture. It talks about what Eve was looking for. She, she was looking for, she saw this fruit and thought, wow, this fruit looks good for food and I don't know what. And it, it, it says it looked good in her eyes. But then when you go back to Genesis 2, I think 19, we saw that the garden they were given it has it had trees yes. trees mm -hmm. not just one trees and with fruits were, which were pleasant to the eyes and good for food same thing mm -hmm. when you read those two scriptures same thing so she was looking for what he already she already had mm -hmm. now she had a garden now that garden is for tilling uh, uh, um, Yes. Yeah, tilling and, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, I love gardening, so every day I'm, I'm, I'm changing plants, I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this. But now she's running after one tree, mm -hmm. one tree. So that tells you the, the kind of insufficiency we feel and the, the selfishness and, and the, the cravings that are not justified mm -hmm. because when you check, actually, Rachel, you asked whether people who are going out are looking for something new. Or you, when you check, some people have good, good spouses, good marriages. Yeah. There's nothing. The, the loopholes, most of the time, it's an excuse. It's not even a reason. And, and so the, the people who are looking for another person to top up, most of the time you find you already are looking for what, you already have what you're mm. looking for. So it and is, you're blinded. And yeah. you're blinded. You don't see it. Yeah. You're not seeing it. It's what we call exactly. being deceived. deceived. And what you have is actually, when you have a partner, you have a family. That's a garden. Yes. You see? There's so much. You're, yeah. you're cultivating love. You're cultivating your uh, generations. You're, it's big. It's a garden. And then you go after one tree. I've used that analogy. But then also, Rachel, um, to help people understand, that uh, especially those from out you see some of these behaviors the consequences are in the future mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they're not, they're not uh, some of them are immediate but most of them are in the future and uh, i always use what we call a timeline model helping people to project life if you're here um, in fantasy with this person, you're hanging out, you're, um, I know so many people when they've started these relationships, someone who has never taken their partner out, especially men, now they have someone who they are traveling with out of the country. You have to project life. How long is this going to last? You see, how long is this going to last? And, um, and, and so when I'm working with people, I say, okay, so now you're 28 or 25 and excited and young and skin and all. But then what happened? Let's add 10 years. Mm -hmm. How will you be looking like? Mm -hmm. What do you think will happen? What do you think is the future of this relationship? Now, Rachel, can I also tell you that most of the relationships of this nature have no future. Mm. Of course. It's here now. Mm. And so they, they find themselves entangled out of uh, wherever. Then they have a child. Then they are stuck. Now, when they have a child, the excitement. Yeah. Because now they've moved really? from 
Relay has started. Real, real life has started. So now they've moved from excitement to management. Mm -hmm. Now when it becomes management, the things that you're, you're, you're managing are going to determine whether you'll keep that excitement. Mm -hmm. Now it turns out that by this time, it, it's no longer exciting and someone is crawling back to their mind. Mm -hmm. And you're burdened. And you're burdened, yeah. right? Um, Whenever I'm working with such people, I ask them, well, what, what were you thinking? You know, when, what was the goal of your relationship? And uh, I, I've never forgotten what one girl told me. She said, it was just for just. Uh. So a just for just relationship, what are you doing? How can you wake up and just invest in a just for just relationship? And it's so, flesh. Yeah. Not only it's flesh. Yeah. It's fleshly excitement. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of pleasure, pleasures yeah. of this world. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, for instance, Rachel, there is a place. I mean, well, I'm, I'm aware that I've interrupted you, but no, that's okay. You, you touch. Mm -hmm. There is a case scenario, for instance. Mm -hmm. You you probably might not bring it up. There are people, but it leads us to what Doctor Evans was saying. There are people who actually do that, uh, be unfaithful, run around with a clear mind saying, I love my wife, yeah. or I love my person, and I have no intention of walking away or divorcing. Yeah. And they will go tell the other person the same thing. I've seen that so many times in mm -hmm. counseling. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they will tell the other person, I love my wife, if you're thinking of me marrying you or whatever, forget it, leave my wife alone, don't call her, don't da 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 da. So, so they will defend their wife, they will say I have a home, I have children, they mm -hmm. go back to so they, they define it clearly from the start. I'm just using you. I'm not taking you anywhere. And then you find that there are also people who accept that, who actually say, it's okay. He told me as a wife, yeah. da, 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 and I'm okay. And so, so now you have, you have a setting where both are aware this is not going to commitment and it's not supposed to be divorce. Mm. So what does that show you? It's flesh. Yes. People doing something that they know is wrong, and biblical and scriptural mm -hmm. covenant abuse, knowing it's not going anywhere. That's why you get a young lady telling you just for it's just. Mm -hmm. It's to feed the flesh. Yeah. But every time you feed the flesh, it's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. It's going to kill you. Going back to what you touched, Genesis 3, they have a whole lot of trees. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I keep telling people, including the tree of life was there too mm -hmm. and they never touched it mm -hmm. adam and eve they never touched it and i want to assure you it must have looked more beautiful the fruit of it than the other they never touched it and again it points to the 80 20 rule you mentioned mm -hmm. here you have a whole so whatever flesh let me share this story from campus university I had a friend of mine who was who on the same hall and he was just two, if I recall, two rooms away from my room. This guy was just sleeping around. Mm -hmm. And one time, when I was third year of school, and he said, you know, I want to clean up. Mm -hmm. I want to clean up because, he, he told me, I, 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 I've been around, slept around with 38 girls. <laughs> and he said, and it's all the same. Mm. That's so. He said, "That's what he said." Yeah. He said, "It's not difference. Mm. They look different when you look at them, but it's all the same." Mm. He said, "It's all the same." Mm. And so now, but the flesh lies to you when something looks different, mm. and you say it will be different. Yeah. It's not going to be different. Mm -hmm. For a moment, it may look different That's because true. because it's fresh. Yeah for a moment. But you see that same boredom, that same, uh, e e what's the English word, Rachel? Give me the English word. Th that dissatisfaction that yeah. crawls in 10 years into your marriage, 10, 15, 20, uh, because you're used familiarity. familiarity yeah. That same familiarity will come up anyway. So here we're deceived by the freshness, the newness, but it's, the, so the guy says it's the same. The same. And so we just have to be careful that we are not just repeating. The issue is, Pastor, we don't have so many testimonies in this area. 
<clears throat> now that that person who gives us a testament that's mm -hmm. wonderful but I want to guarantee you Rachel that if we gathered people that have been involved in this they'll tell you the amount of emptiness that it brings, mm -hmm. that it brings. they'll tell you the amount of pain now as a wellness expert I've told people any behavior you sustain with negative energy um, be careful because it's eating you up now, it, that, this behavior of, of um, let me grab someone else, I'm dealing with a marriage wrecker, mm. or you yourself, both of you are, that is maintained by lies, mm -hmm. yeah? It's maintained by anxiety, uncertainty, you're not so sure whether it will be found out. We've seen people fall in bathrooms hiding phones and, and all that. Now, that is not healthy living. It's not healthy living, and that's why I encourage people, to exercise discipline. A life of discipline is a life of peace and freedom, mm -hmm. right? Just imagine I have to put, I can put as many passwords here, and, and some people have passwords. <laughs> uh, passwords for contacts, passwords for, uh, passwords. Every password is actually, it, it sends a, a, a signal to your brain. And it could be a negative signal, positive signal. But uh, if you're putting a password for the wrong reasons, then that is going to affect you. And uh, if you're there, and every time, you know, managing your phone becomes a full-time job. <laughs> and, and this is what is happening. People are not you, well. You can't leave it they can't. on the dining table. And, and, uh, and uh, as, a, as a specialist in this area, I'll tell you, um, when, <clears throat> when the behavior is found out, Sometimes partners haven't even gone out to look for it. It's just one thing, and then they discover, and they see how confused you are, how you, you're like a shadow in your own family, um, you're, you're not so sure every phone that calls, you know. So that behavior is not healthy. And if people knew that actually um, it's more losses than gains, um, you've heard me say that uh, <clears throat> these extras, not every extra is an addition, no. Uh, some of the extras are a big subtraction to your health and, and to your family. Um, children are confused, you're not seen because you have someone who you think is topping up your marriage. But, but then also, also Pastor, you, you mentioned something um, about... Um, uh, uh, about which point we pointed to immaturity. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see, <clears throat> our ability to be resilient, um, there are certain things that speak to our what we call emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And uh, emotional intelligence is mainly about relationship management. And, and so when, when you are married, and you have a partner, and, and they have challenges or they have weaknesses. We all have to consider that both of us are growing. When you're seeing a challenge in your partner, mm -hmm. they are also seeing a, a, a weakness in you. That's so true. it doesn't mean that you, you're wonderfully made and then the other person has defects. So the moment you make a decision to grow together and to move together, that helps. Yeah. But not to say, oh, I've seen this, now I have to get someone else. Even the whole world, and then you go out to tell lies and, and all, all those things mm -hmm. that are causing so much emotional um, pain and, and uh, mental health challenges. Yeah. Dr. Evers, when you were starting your submission earlier, you said the purpose of this conversation is to bring healing. And both of you are in spaces where people come to you looking for just that healing. They've been through this, this experience, maybe someone was duped into thinking they had a future with a, a married woman or a married man, and now it has ended in premium tears. Or they didn't know, like the young lady who reached out to you. I, I want both of you to just give your parting shots in a minute or under a minute and say something to someone who might have been through this experience or is considering it so that we end the show on a, a healing note, if you will. Let me say this. Um, the matter we are discussing is deeply spiritual. Most people mm -hmm. don't know it. Mm -hmm. That's why earlier on I said we are talking a covenant issue. Covenant from the Bible is something that affects the roots 
of our life to a person who is in covenant who deliberately goes on to break it there are so many things that you've torn apart concerning your own life mm -hmm. that affect you see the spiritual realm Rachel the life of the spirit I'm a man of the spirit so I'll speak for that as closing remarks mm -hmm. the world that we see today was made out of the unseen world mm -hmm. so the tangible physical world everything we see touch including yourselves came from the realm of the spirit and in Malachi 2 God speaking about marriage he says I hate putting away I hate dealing treacherously with your spouse mm -hmm. then he finishes he strongly he says it twice take heed to your spirit mm -hmm. yet in marriage he says the two shall become one flesh, one flesh. Mm -hmm. but here he says take heed to your spirit why does he do that because the moment you enter into covenant you enter a spiritual realm mm -hmm. And when you enter that spiritual realm now, from what you do in that realm, okay. lashes back and affects everything now about your health, mental, physical, finances, everything now in your physical world gets messed up. And don't be deceived if it looks okay for a moment. It's bound to be because your spiritual world has been messed up with. He says, take heed to your spirit. I hate putting away. That would be a physical separation, but take it to your spirit because mm -hmm. this is how it's gonna. Mm -hmm. Now to the person who would be the outside third party, that's a spirit realm you've entered in and you've, again you're messing with a spiritual order mm -hmm. that God ordained. Mm -hmm. And then when you enter there, you've not only messed up with the spiritual world of that couple, then your own spiritual world messed up mm. messed up and again you may not see it but unless you go back and correct it before God really honestly from your heart walk away and say God I'm sorry I shouldn't have messed with this I don't care born again or not born again if that couple just is a couple before God you just want to say I'm sorry I touched this I shouldn't have touched this because God says I hate messing with that yeah. world because it's the, Rachel, it's the only thing mm -hmm. marriage is the only thing God says I am like that with my church mm -hmm. yes. think about the depth of it there Dr. Evers there is no other relationship God li likens him the deepest of which he says Christ and the church yeah. and he never lets go and he never walks away because we are imperfect mm -hmm. and he just doesn't give up he doesn't quit he doesn't find somebody else to replace us he works with us what makes us think we can replace somebody's wife or husband because 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 so it's deeply 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 spiritual you don't want to walk into spiritual issues raise children with spiritual issues have to you you, you don't want to get into that world mm. it's a mess there are too many things that follow you after that if you enter that world of messing with that spiritual covenant of marriage and I don't want anybody to be you'd rather be inside deal with the issues you will heal God will be there helping you then import more trouble than what you already have in your house yeah. it's deeply spiritual wow. if I had an hour I, I would <laughs> but it's deeply spiritual that's yeah. right and it will affect everything else yeah. that's right so, no, so um, related to that thank you Pastor Kabwisa um, just remi reminded me of, of the scripture um, in think Matthew um, which where God was saying, which says, whom God has put together, yeah, let, no man. let no man separate, let no man put asunder. And um, that scares me because um, the people God has put together, and He says, let no one separate them. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, it worries me that someone can say, what are you saying, God? <laughs> or separate them and see what you're going to do. You see? And um, I don't know why people don't fear that, that you can do that. And uh, I liked that you explained the spiritual implications of some of these behaviors. But uh, for me speaking as a psychologist, um, helping people understand that uh, Human beings are broken. We are all a broken people. And, uh, and uh, 
to caution people not to use eyes <laughs> to make life-changing decisions what he was talking about so you see someone and say hey now those uh, that's called sensational decision making um anything you you any decision you make based on how you feel doesn't have a future and and so that's why we encourage people to use logic um, the people you, if, if for instance I said I'm abandoning my husband for Pastor Kabwisa because he has spoken this or has, uh, I see him. How much do I know about him? Mm -hmm. This relationship, you're dealing with a human being, right? And so, and we are different. I could, ha I could have strength in certain areas but have weaknesses. Now, if you run away from me because I have this weakness and you go for someone, they may not have the same weakness but they have others. And that's how people end up being totally messed up. They get to a point of no return. They've run looking, looking at someone because they've seen <laughs> but you, that's not how decisions are made. So if you've seen this person, you have to know that it's going to be management. You know, it's going to be management. Life is about management. And, and so um, why, why, for instance, I always tell people that we marry three persons in one. The one that you thought you knew, the one that they really are, and the one they become because of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So if, if you get this person, if, when we discover someone and say, oh, they have this weakness, and you feel that justifies your running away to get another person, you're actually plunging yourself into serious management issues, and it's going to be messy. Now, you're no longer a single person. Probably you've left behind children. Probably, so that's how actually people affect their um, immunity. Yeah. They, 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 you're, or you live a life of stress and confusion and, and depression sometimes and being stuck. And so I, um, my parting shots would be, let people adopt a life of discipline. After all, you cannot top up your marriage, mm -hmm. no. Or you can, you're, and the person who is outside, you're not any better than the person inside, to be honest with you. Like, there's nothing so special about you. you you're just another broken person. And, and lastly, Rachel, to also assure people who are running, because um, I've seen this statistic make <laughs> the devil is a liar. Making rounds, um, have you seen statistics of or the ratio between men and women? Um, that's yeah, actually, there, are, there are more women than there are men. More women than men. There are four. Then, and that's a lie. There are for some men believe they are God's gift to the extra women. Yes. <laughs> So, but also women use it as an excuse, by the way, to grab some and say, and I've what about me? I've always yeah, asked, what about me? yes, I've always yeah, asked, are you sure there were no more single men for, you know, for you to, to, pick, from. to pick from uh, than to run after somebody's uh, partner? So I just want to assure people that the, all those are lies. Yeah. They are innovations of the enemy to get us confused mm -hmm. and, uh, and to, to, to break, to wreck, yeah. to wreck a family. Yeah. To wreck, that has long-term spiritual but also physical yeah. implications mm -hmm. and mental health implications. Mm -hmm. And so I think... Uh, yeah. Rachel, mm -hmm. I know our time is gone, yes. mm -hmm. but you will never get me speaking on this for the next probably... Mm. Five years, I have mm. to say this. It's very important. Mm. As, 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 mm. as Dr. Evers was winding up, the Lord just took me to, I really have to say this. Mm. Think about Adam and Eve in the beginning. This is going to get some people thinking. God creates a perfect marriage. Remember, they had not been touched by sin yes. at that time. So they are perfect. Sinless man, sinless woman. God brings them together. Mm -hmm. The perfect woman brought trouble, mm -hmm. introduced trouble. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And this is where people think now to where we started. The reason this is happening, there is trouble here, mm -hmm. she's not perfect, she's not perfect. The perfect woman brought trouble. So it does not mean she was wrong from the start. Mm -hmm. But an issue has come up with her. Mm. Now, this is what I wanted our dear people to, 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 to hold on to. 
God is creator. Mm. So if God's solution was in finding third parties, if I were God, mm. I would say, Adam, I'm so, so, Adam, I'm so sorry. I didn't know she was going to behave like this, mm. entice you with this, get you. Ah. I apologize. Okay, uh, let me make you another one. She'll be better, well behaved. Two point oh. And 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 if from today behave yourself, you you've troubled my son. Look where he has ended up now. Adam, he is Rita, and so if you were God, you want to make the man has problem in trouble in his home because of this woman. So if you're God, you want to make him another to say. Peace. This one will rest to you. This one will. God didn't do that, and yet He had the power to do that. Pray, tell me why. Why didn't He? God Almighty, who could create another woman, did not. Mm -hmm. He basically said, "You'll work it out. Mm -hmm. You'll work it out," and that's it. Mm -hmm. And He didn't apologize. You realize He didn't apologize. Adam tried to get him, the woman you gave me, and God doesn't say sorry. Mm -hmm. So this is where we say, ah, the woman I married, the man I married. So I wanted us to go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. If God never found the solution in making a third person, we, what makes us think that we can. we're going to find a solution in a third person? Because yeah. he knew that Adam was also broken. Yeah. The guy had <laughs> lost it. So, so that's why he, I, I liked that. That's why he left them to sort to sort to, to, to quest sorting. Quest sorting. <laughs> and, and he knew that both of them had work to do. Yeah. Yeah, so he, 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 he left them to solve the problem, yeah. not to flee from yeah. the problem. Yeah. And, and I think that's really, really very, powerful. Very, very, very important. Thank you both. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Dr. Evers, for this very enlightening conversation. I know Dr. Evers can agree with me that I feel like we tried to maintain the sensitivity of it, but also still deliver truth. Um, for those of you that are watching, and healing, yeah, for those of you that are watching, let us know what has stood out for you in this conversation. Let us know in our comment section. Um, and share this episode with someone who might find it useful. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to comment. We appreciate your feedback immensely. My name is Rachel, and um, our guests, Dr. Ivas and Pastor Kagwisa. Until next time, it's goodbye. Stay healthy, stay well. We'll be back next week with another conversation. Bye.